Welcome to my talk, Information Extraction from Co-Occurring Similar Entities. My name is Nico Heiss, and I'm a researcher at the Data and Web Science Group at the University of Mannheim. This is joint work with my supervisor, Heiko Paulheim. So first, let me show you on what kind of constructs we're focusing on with our extraction. On this Wikipedia page of X rows, you can see several constructs where entities co-occur that have this something in common. So they are similar in a certain kind of way. So concretely, we have numerations here and we have tables. Um, but in theory, we're not only focusing on those two kinds of um, co-occurrence structures, but basically on any kinds of structures where entities can co-occur. And apart from encyclopedic corpora, there are of course other structures on the web. Um, yeah, for example, uh, the website of our um, research group um, where you also have so, such kinds like enumerations right here where um, similar entities are listed. In this case, the professors of our research group, uh, which are also later on described in, in certain boxes. Um, but let's first, um, yeah, make sure that we're talking um, of the same things when we're talking of listings. So basically, we are abstracting all these uh, co-occurrence structures and simply, um, yeah, labeling them as listings uh, so that we have sets of similar entities. And we're not focusing on all the entities in the listings, but only on subject entities, which are namely uh, those entities that really represent the subjects of the listings. So for example, um, in this table right here, as it is about films of Axel Rose, of course, we're only using um, the entities in the, in the title column as subject entities, as those are the, the movies or, or TV shows or whatever um, in which Axel Rose is, is staring. So we don't really focus on relationships between entities within a listing, but rather on relationships between entities uh, in a listing and their context. Um, and let's take a look at what kind of um, axioms we really can derive from, from listings. So we basically want to learn listing axioms. This means we try to find out what makes uh, these, the subject entities in the listing similar. For example, um, when we take a look at all the listings right here under the, in the discography section, we can say all of them have the artist Axel Rose, for example, or all of them are of the type musical work. And um, all, the, all the entities in this listing right here have the musical band Guns N' Roses, which we can easily see by uh, the section header. Um, the same thing can go on for, for other kinds of entities. And also down here in the filmography section, we can say all of the subject entities in the listing um, have, could, could have the fact staring Axel Rose. And they could all be of the type work. Uh, some of them might be of the type film, but uh, in this case, um, not all of them, but some might be TV shows or something else. Um, why is that useful? Because uh, from these axioms, of course, we can uh, derive facts for the individual subject entities of the listings and simply uh, extend existing knowledge graphs with them. We could also discover new entities, for example, ready to rumble EP or anxious disease would be entities that are not known to Wikipedia yet, which we could um, discover with a subject entity discovery mechanism, and then also put them uh, as new entities in our knowledge graph. Now, what would, be, what would be an easy way to derive or to learn such listing axioms uh, from the listings? Well, a simple way would be to simply use counting, um, meaning we can use um, distance supervision ba based on a given knowledge graph, for example, DBpedia, uh, and the local cross word assumption to say, for all these entities and the listings, we can um, derive certain frequency of facts occurring. So in that sense, for example, uh, all of them would have the fact um, that the artist is Axel Rose, that the type is work, and most of them have the type musical work, for example. Um, of course, this frequency is only an estimation because the knowledge graph is not always complete and errors can occur. And we might have further problems with other listings. For example, in some listings, we have too few examples or unknown entities. So um, this method is not easily applicable to any kinds of listings. And thus, what we want to do is instead of relying on frequencies only, we take the context of the listings into account. Um, so this Wikipedia page here of Gilby Clark is quite similar to the one of Axel Rose that we've seen previously. So what we can see is that the setup of the page, so for example, the top section headers and also the section headers are rather similar. And this also works for other kinds of musicians in Wikipedia, like uh, from other bands and also from completely different genres. We still have this uh, general setup, which is the same. So the context 
and it's not too different for, for any kinds of musician in that sense. Um, and we frame this task um, of deriving axioms from listings now as an association rule problem. And as the antecedent of the rule would simply be describing the context of the listing and the consequent of the rule would be describing the axiom that we could learn. So for example, we have the axiom artist Axel Rose and for that, we, we would need to, to know that the top section is labeled discography and that the, the page is about the, the artist Axel Rose. And then we could derive the following uh, axiom or rule just in description logic notation here, which says, uh, if we have the top section discography of a listing, then we can say that all the entities have the artist, uh, which is the page entity. So in this case, it would be Axel Rose. Um, the same could go for, for other um, axioms. For example, if we say the type is musical work, then we could derive the rule, okay, if the top section is discography, then most likely all the subject entities of the listings have the type musical work. And this also goes for uh, relations, not only for types, where we can say the musical band is Guns N' Roses right here. This would mean, okay, um, we have the top section discography and we use um, the the type of an, of, the enti of an entity that's covered in a section, which could be, for example, band, then we can say the musical band is the entity that occurs in the respective section. But in contrast to um, original association rule learning, we can't be certain that an axiom holds for a list. Um, we only have the probability, which we have derived from the entities with distant supervision and local closed world assumption. So what we need to do is, we have to really find the original metrics that, that are used in association rule mining. Um, so for example, we have the support, which is a typical measure there, and we don't, we don't touch that basically. So we simply say uh, the support of a rule is simply the number of listing that are, listings that are covered by the rule antecedent. And now to measure the confidence of a rule, um, we say that we use the frequency of the rule consequent over all covered listings. So we don't distinguish between individual listings here, but we simply take all the subject entities that occur in the listings that are covered by the rule and um, yeah, derive the frequency um, of that as a confidence. But as we uh, didn't look at uh, individual listings here, we also need to make sure that the rule can be applied consistently to all the metrics, um, uh, to all the, um, the listings that it applies to. So what we then also define is another metric, which is which we call consistency. And here we take the, the mean absolute deviation of the overall confidence from here and uh, the confidence of an individual listing. And we sum that up for all the covered listings to make sure that a rule can be applied consistently over all the covered listings. Well, and then the rules can basically be selected based on thresholds that we define for these metrics. And these th the thresholds are, of course, data set dependent. We can predefine them. Okay, now let me present you an extraction pipeline uh, for Wikipedia with our approach. This would be an overview. So we start with a dump of Wikipedia, of course, and a knowledge graph that we want to extend and which we use for distance supervision. So um, uh, here in our experiments, we have used Wikipedia, um, but we have also used Calligraph which is also a Wikipedia based knowledge graph which, uh, with a rich ontology that is based on categories and list pages. So it's also quite fitting here to use that for extension. So then in this first subject entity discovery step is basically what we do is we discover all relevant listings and um, we uh, find all the subject entities in the listings. Then in the descriptive rule mining step, we generate rule candidates and select the rules based on these previously defined metrics. And finally, in our assertion generation and filtering steps, we apply the rules to generate assertions and filter out unlikely assertions. Okay, so the first step, the subject entity discovery. Here, we train a specialized named entity tagger to find the unknown entities and listings, additionally to the ones that are already tagged by Wikipedia with a wiki link. And in total, we find uh, 5.1 million relevant listings uh, with 110 million mentions uh, overall. Um, and for the subject entity discovery phase, we use an XGBoost classifier with handcrafted features. And this has been done in previous work already. So with that, we um, derive uh, uh, 25.8 million subject entities and two and a half million listings uh, with a precision of roughly 90%. 
okay, the second step, the descriptive rule mining, here we should take a look at what kind of context we're actually using for the rules, for the rule antecedent and for the rule consequent. So first of all, we are using the page title and its entity basically. So we can use the type of the page entity in the rule antecedent. For example, saying if the, the page is, uh, or the entity of the page is an artist, then we can derive a certain rule, for example. And also in the consequent, we can use the page entity as you've seen already with um, deriving a fact like artist Gilby Clark in that case. And we can also use the top sections, so the, the highest, highermost sections, um, like discography, for example. Um, there we use the name of the top section and also the entity type if an entity occurs in the section. And this entity can also be used in the, in the rule consequent. And finally, the same thing applies to the individual sections right there. So we can use the section name to describe uh, the context. And we can use the type of an entity that might occur in the section, we, for example, like band. And then we can use the section entity um, in the rule consequent to describe the axioms. Okay, let's talk about how we select our thresholds. Um, we select them based on a metric which we call tag fit. And this metric is um, compared by, um, yeah, by using the derived facts from our rules and we compare them with the named entity tag of dimensions. So um, consider the following example. We have a, a mention with a named entity tag person and we derive the, tag, the fact and type musical artist for it. This is totally fine. But now we have the same named entity tag person and we derive the fact place, which is basically not correct. So this is an error. And the same also goes if we, for example, derive the named entity tag or we have the named entity tag place and we derive the fact artist of the spaghetti incident, but we didn't know that the domain, the domain of artist of is actually person. So this is also not correct. And what we do to find um, a correct threshold is we compute the tag fit of all the rules in, in given intervals for, for confidence and for consistency. And we select the, the threshold based on the steepest decline from one interval to another. So for example, here for type confidence, we see here's the steepest decline and we use this as threshold. And the same for type consistency, for example, here we also see it's a rather steep decline. So 0 0.75 would be our threshold. Great. So finally, we have our rules. We uh, have derived 5.3 million type rules and 3,000 um, relation rules. And from those, we generate in total um, around 12 million facts for DVpedia, so relations and types, and uh, around yeah um, 48 million facts for Calligraph. So um, we also do uh, filtering based on these facts also. Um, with this logic that I've presented previously by comparing the named entity tag with the derived facts. So we filter out invalid facts like that. And when we finally take a look at the types that we derived um, based on the top level distribution, we see that we yeah, have a very diverse set of types that we can extract. Um, let's finally take a look at the evaluation. So we have taken uh, samples of our derived facts and checked them for correctness. And we have basically compared the frequency-based approach that I've presented initially with our rule-based approach. And what you can see is that with the rule-based approach, and we derive more facts in all scenarios, and we also have a higher correctness, basically, for all the three scenarios, which shows that our rule-based method, um, which is taking the context of the listings into account, is working uh, way better. Finally, let's uh, have, a, have a little outlook. So overall, uh, we see several directions in which our approach could be extended. Um, for Wikipedia itself, we want to explore uh, a multi-language support and we want to experiment with finer grained context than only the page entity and the sections. And beyond Wikipedia, it would be interesting to apply the approach to, to other corpora like wikis in the fandom universe or non-encyclopedic corpora. And finally, if you want to use the extraction results that we have generated, um, they are integrated in the newest version 2.0 of Calligraph. Okay, that's it. So thank you for watching.